Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. This is the Real Estate 360 podcast. And if you're hearing this or seeing this, you're either listening to it on one of the podcast services that you like to use or you're watching it on YouTube. Either way, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, engage, comment. Let me know what you think, okay? Well, today we're gonna be talking about the five steps to make money. Well, not the only five steps, but five steps that you can make money in real estate today, right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Peace. Hey, hey. Good day, everyone. Good day, Steve. How are you? I am doing fantastic, you know. How about you? How are man, you? Man, I have no complaints, man. I have no complaints. I mean, you know, we're we're sitting here in a in a in a market that is a little bit uncertain, but um, you know, all this uncertainty just creates opportunity. I'm going nuts over here, you know, with uh all the opportunities, you know, I'm thinking how can I juggle all this stuff? Yeah. It's like, holy moly. But uh, we want to talk about one thing in particular, don't you? Well, a, a little bit. I mean, it's it's more like five things, you know? Okay. And it's, uh, I, I sit back. I wind up just sitting back uh, at night in early morning sometimes, and I just have these ideas. I'm always thinking about, I mean, you know, I know we're all doing it. But I know I'm, I'm thinking a lot about right now about the shifts in the market and, and how, you know, we can invest now, right? Because every industry has these market shifts. And I think of banking and banking kind of correlates to our industry, right? When, when, there, when there's, you know, when the banking market, the financial markets are really, really struggling, you know, sometimes real estate, a lot of times actually real estate struggles and, you know, your typical, you know, method, like for us, you know, the wholesaling and fix and flipping, it doesn't stop, but it definitely slows way, 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 way down, right? And in your financial markets and the stock market, you know, those things are constantly producing revenue all the time, but it's different. You know, sometimes you're in a bear market, sometimes you're in a bull market, sometimes there's puts, sometimes there's calls, sometimes you're in this industry. Sometimes you got to exit that industry to get into another industry because this one's doing bad or this one's doing really well or forecasted to do, to do well. So the point I'm trying to make is you're in the same business, but you have to shift processes in order to consistently make money. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. And um, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, you and I have been around long enough to, to recognize that this is cyclical. You know, there are cycles mm. that come and go. And so I get a chance to look back and say, well, gosh, I've kind of seen something like this before. And uh, so what were the processes now? Keep in mind that real estate is not another can of pinto beans. <laughs> you know, it's, it's different. Every single cycle is a little different. You know, your can of beans, I guess, are a little different too, but they're pretty much the same. Um, <laughs> so when we see cycles like this, you know, we, we have to make some adjustments, but the processes can be the same. That's exactly right. You know, um, not to say that what we're going through now or will be going through over the course of the next, you know, 12 months or just you know, maybe even the next couple quarters, but I say the next 12 months, I'm not saying it's going to be like it was in 08 and 09, God forbid, right? God forbid that's something yeah. that we have God to forbid. deal with, you know, <laughs> but any dips in the market, any dips in cycles, like you said, like you, like you said, you know, we are fortunate enough to have seen, you know, these cycles and knowing, you know, our, our knowing that we've got experience in this business, and for us to continue to push the envelope and say, hey, this is the thing we're doing. We're going to only do this thing and we're going to force our way. You know, it, it just doesn't work. You're, you're, you're fighting an uphill battle. And really, it's not even uphill. You're just hitting a wall, right? Well, look, you know, we don't ever do that. 
Right. You, exactly. I mean, never, you know, I mean, a lot of people do, but they've got their system, you know, I buy, they say, I buy rental property or I buy fix and flip. Hey, you know, you and I don't do that. Mm -hmm. We look at the house and we say, well, what are the, what's the circumstances, situations, what are the assets here that we have to work with? And then we put the, put the transaction together based on what we're looking at right in front of us. For sure. Right? Because it could be different all the time. You know, when I was starting off doing this all by myself, it, it was crazy because I knew that one way, right? I, I wasn't, I didn't, I hadn't gotten a mentor yet. I, you know, I hadn't had any coaching or anything. It was just me out there reading books, trying to go on it, go at it on my own. And I left so much money on the table as I learned later, you know, the two and a half years later, of course, but as I learned, Hey, there's, there's more than one way to skin this cat. I realized that I left so much money on the table, only looking at that uh, wholesale opportunity. You know, you know, it's funny you should mention that because just in the last week or so, I've been looking back at some of the transactions kind of that I've kind of been responsible for. And I'm thinking, holy moly, I've left a couple hundred thousand dollars on the table over the last year or two, maybe at the most, you know, Yeah. but you know, you don't know really sometimes when you're right in the middle of it, if you're leaving money on the table, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, the, I couldn't Even agree more experience guys. You know, the, I couldn't agree more. You know, there's, <clears throat> so that's why, you know, I was sitting back uh, the other day and I was going over these processes and I wanted to really write down, you know, some things that we could share with people, you know, as conditions change. You know, there's these five steps uh, that we use. Really, we're looking at them in, in every space. But if you, if you were just starting out in a bad market, right, in a, in a terrible market and there's, you know, there's foreclosures all around you. There's evictions all around you. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anyone, but, you know, it, it happens, well, right? If it but, doesn't, it's, it's probably going to look that way really soon. That's that's for sure. <laughs> and yeah, there's... We were there, talking about this, and you were saying, hey, you know, this is what's coming, and I, you know, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, it's coming, you know. Yeah. There's going to be foreclosures and evictions like crazy, regardless of the protests for evictions and things like that, simply because, you, you know, and I know that there's probably people that are listening to this that are saying, oh, my God, you know, these guys are, you know, you know, pro landlord. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pro feeding my family. That's what I'm pro, right? So when we, we sit back and we, we're all in this struggle together in a lot of different ways, right? I mean, in the struggle together, but feeling the pain in different ways. You know, folks that are renting apartments and houses that can't pay their rent and they're lobbying to, you know, to the government to say, hey, you know, stop foreclosures, stop stop evictions, stop these things. Well, those landlords are people too. And a lot of those landlords are not independently wealthy. And when I say wealthy, I mean they can't support their family and all of you as well because they'll go exactly. bankrupt. <laughs> you know, they're going to go know, out of business. If the government would come in, instead of giving the money to the tenants, give the money to the lenders to take the pressure off of the whole chain there, mm -hmm. you know, that might work. That's exactly but, right. But then they're getting back into the housing industry and they're not really good at that. N they never have been, you know, <laughs> they never have been. And, th and that's just, Hey man, that's, uh, that's what we are. I mean, that's just where we are. Affordable housing. We know that that's an issue here. That's an issue nationwide. You know, that issue can be coupled with, you know, um, disparities in earnings, you know, who, I mean, and it, and it just continues to roll down and roll down and roll down. You know, there's some people that say, you know, pay us more because you're making more. There's some people that say, hey, go get a job, buddy. Start a business. Do it. Do your own thing. You know, there's a, a lot of different schools of thought out there. Ultimately, you know, the vast majority of people are going to go to work for someone. So should there, should there be equality in earnings? Yeah. I mean, everything should be 
everything is supposed to kind of gel. You know, it's very difficult when, you know, in a, in a few parts of this country where the price of real estate is so absurd, you know, how can you make, how can a family, you know, make $100,000 a year, right? And which sounds like a lot of money, but again, it depends on where you live, right? If you're in California or New York, and you make $100,000 a year, but, you know, the average house is a million dollars, that, uh, that's, that, that's pretty tough. You know, I mean, that is beyond difficult. So, I mean. It is. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of pull you off of that a little bit, little bit because it is what, what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're here to show the new investor, or maybe the, even the old investor, a new way to look at things and a, maybe a process. And you put together, you know, five steps to, um, to realize some financial gains mm-hmm. and help people along the way, both sides of the equation. And I'd really like to talk about that. Well, of course. And that's just, that's literally where we're going, right, my man? You know, yeah, so in. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we talk about, you know, what can we do? And, and there's these five steps that, that we can utilize uh, when we're looking at an opportunity, you know, and an opportunity that's coming up. A lot of people, I mean, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of people. I'm one of those guys that just starts up conversations when, when it's, you know, when it's in front of me, I'll just talk about stuff. Right. And one of the things I talk about is obviously real estate. And I ask people, you know, what do you, have, do you know anyone that's made money in real estate? What do you think about the market today? Do you know anyone that's lost money in real estate? And, you know, inevitably the answer is uh, yes to all of that, right? But people look at real estate as a, as a risky business and it's, you know, but then they'll go invest their money in the stock market. I don't, I don't get it, but there's these five steps that you can utilize to make this process a lot, a lot easier for you when you're using it in, in, in one kind of way, right? And one of those, the first step, I would say, uh, one of those steps is a process that works in any market. Because as people like you and I, uh, who are running around, you know, and we're training people around the country, you know, we're working with a lot of people, we see people say, hey, Uh, Miles, that process doesn't work in my city. You know, I'm in a city where, you know, we're not finding anything at 60, 70 cents on the dollar. You know, our city is more like, you know, 80. I'm only finding 80%. Well, I understand that. You know, that it's a different process there, right? The lending works differently in those areas, all of that. Okay, so you have to do something that is going to be easy to do everywhere or, or very similar, you know, everywhere every single place, right? So basically what I'm saying is, you know, finding that process, finding a process that works anywhere is ultimately uh, what you want to do, right? And you know, what you were just talking about the different areas and the different percentages and the different valuations and the five steps that we're going to be talking about, man, it's perfect for any area. Almost any economic situation, mm-hmm. certainly it's better when you have a lot more uh, turmoil in the marketplace, which we're getting ready to see big time. Uh, but I love this. I love this program you're getting ready to lay out because it does work everywhere. It does. It, it truly does. So a process that works in any market is, is, is the first thing. you got to have that, right? You have to have it. You have to identify that. We've kind of simplified this process for you, but, you know, we got that. And it has to take the least of your time, right? Because if you're at work, you know, you don't have another, most people don't have another 40 hours to put in somewhere or another, you know, even another 20 hours a week to put in. Uh, I mean, could they find it? Maybe. Depends on their life, right? It depends on their career. There's a lot of variables there, you know, so it's not as easy uh, for some people to just pick up and start fixing flips. You know what I'm saying? I do. And, but you, I'm going to back up just a second. Cause this is number two of the five steps that, Correct. that video is about. 
And it's kind of more like, these are almost like the benefits of doing this particular program as opposed to the five steps. But, but the benefit is time, like you just said. Mm -hmm. So time is number two. And uh, the cool thing about that is, you know, you have total control of the situation. So, so with that time, now you can take your focus and put it on this particular process and you don't have to, you don't have to fix and flip the property. You don't have to go get a new loan. You don't have to uh, do certain marketing. You don't have to contact realtors. Just so many things you don't have to do. That's correct. In this process, and that's what you're talking about with the the time situation. Well, a thousand percent. I mean. Listen, it, let me, it'll go right into this uh, one here. The, the third one is the least risk, right? You know, if you could get into, when you're typically, when you're thinking real estate, typically most people are like, I need money, I need credit. You know, I have to go and identify this. I've got to get the contractor. I've got to get the attorney. I've got, you know, they have all these thoughts in their mind about how this is actually going to play out. But you, again, you want to eliminate risk in everything you do, right? If you could eliminate risk in its entirety, everybody would win at everything they ever tried to do, right? But <laughs> so getting rid of it is not, it's, it's not a reality. So we have to make sure that we're minimizing risk. And the kind of risk that we're talking about is your individual exposure to um, foreclosures and loss of capital in particular. And being able to identify these these areas in the market, you know, the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows, the yin and the yang, whatever you like, right? Uh, being able to identify them will help you minimize that risk for you, right? When we're talking about this one in, one specific type of process, you know, by, by eliminating, or I'm sorry, minimizing the risk as it relates to your exposure and maximizing your ability to make money that is a fantastic place to be in. I mean, it's it's a fantastic pos position to be in. It is, and, and from the, my perspective, the only risk that someone's going to have is just not knowing what they're looking at when it comes to the the real estate itself. In other words, when they see it, they may not be able to see it. If you know what I mean. Absolutely. So, it's but a, we're, that might require a little education. Without a doubt, you know, but in that education, what you're learning is going right into step four, and that's you're providing a service. You're providing a service to not just the person that you're getting the house from, but to the people that you're going to be giving, yeah. the, getting the house to. Because again, here we run into this a lot of times. We run into people that have some money and they just don't have the credit. And for one reason or another, you know, they haven't been able to get their credit fixed. Maybe it's just not high on their priority list, you know, for some reason. I mean, that just happens, right? But you're providing a service. You know, if you can help people and provide a solution to these problems that we're out, that we're going to be outlining, uh, you're a champion. Sure. I mean, absolutely. you're an absolute champion because that's what all this is. People are always asking, well, how did they get so rich? How did this happen? How did that happen? Or how did they come up with that, that invention or that process that seems so simple? Well, it's in that simplicity that you'll find the answer to the question. They simply found a solution to a problem that existed, that we all saw, we've all experienced, but one someone said first, hey, how about I do this to fix that? And that's how people get wealthy. Right. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to come up with that idea. Mm -hmm. It's already here. We're going to give it to you. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. And, and going right into the fifth step, which is, you know, you have to have a strategy that is the most profitable strategy, right? The most profitable based on your particular strategy. And what I mean by that is this. You've got people that they believe in fix and flip, right? Yeah. They they believe yeah. in fix and flip. 
Uh, they know there's a ton of money there, but the market conditions aren't always great to do that. So if all you're doing is fix and flip, you're going to hit hit a wall. You're going to get into, you're going to fall into the economic cycle that is slow for that particular aspect of business, right? And, and, and that fix and flip idea is really just a box in mm-hmm. your mind, right? That's right. But so A lot of people say, the only thing I understand is fix and flip. I don't understand that you can buy something and turn around and sell it and make money without doing anything to it. I've had a lot of people say that to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's just, I mean, there's three things that, that people are looking at, right? There's, there's the fix and flip. They like that. They like yeah. the, uh, then there's cash flow, like from multifamily, you know, you get nice, big, juicy cash flow uh, from multifamily in a normal market. Right. <laughs> and then, right. and then there's the people that believe in um, time, and the compound interest factor over time, basically buy and hold strategy. But you know your typical buy and hold, especially on a single family house, uh, you know you're going to buy it. Maybe you cash flow a couple hundred bucks when you work out the math over a four or five year period. You know before you account for depreciation, but after you account for repairs, after you account for the taxes that are paid. You know the property manager. You know, that 200 bucks you're making is, is nothing. You know, over a four or five year period, if everything went well, you know, you might make 11 or 12 grand when it's all said and done. Not a year over that five year, four or five year period, you know. Oh. <laughs> so, <Ouch. laughs> exactly. But with this you method. Know, that's good for somebody who has a regular job and, <laughs> and they don't buy too many houses because if you buy too many, then you're going to be, you've got a full time job that really doesn't pay you anything. That's exactly but, right. But listen, there's a place for those in terms of equity build and um, value appreciation mm-hmm. and mortgage pay down and all that and tax advantages. It adds so up. Necessarily not to do it. We're just saying. No, you know, but this process that we're talking about here encompasses all three of those things. Yes, it does. It encompasses all three of those things. So what we're talking about here is you know, one, like you said, not, not creating a job for yourself. You know, that's my big thing. I didn't, I tell people that all the time. I did not start this business to create a job for myself. You know, we, we want to be able to, you know, go and visit our family or take our family on vacation. And, you know, we want to be able to enjoy our life and, uh, you know, creating another job for yourself doesn't necessarily do that. Right. So we kind of, stay away from that. But this is, this process is encompassing all three of those things, right? You're going to get the nice big lump sums of cash, uh, cash flow that you like. Uh, you're going to get the ability to take advantage of those, those tax advantages. You're going to get the benefit of taking advantage of growth over time, but how you're coming into the deal with a little bit of equity. You know, uh, we talk about, we talked about this before where, you know, depends on the deal and it depends on the, you know, every deal is different, but we'd want to, we want to get into most of these deals with a, a pretty, a decent equity position, you know? So meaning, you know, if a house is worth 200,000 and we can pick it up for 170 and do what we want to do with it over time, Hey, that's great. That's perfect for us because for the time that we have that particular property, our growth is starting at 200. Okay. So right. if, if the market is growing at just, you know, we have appreciation at just a 3% clip, you know, we're in it at 170, but in year one, it's worth 206, you know, and we're, we're going to get the great benefit of that over time. That's, that's all I'm saying. And how long is it? You know, this is a process that you can do anywhere between, a th- I would say, a three and five year period. And by utilizing this process of going out, finding distressed properties, distressed people, not necessarily physically distressed, because you don't want to, in this process, you don't want to do a bunch of fix and flip. You don't want to do a bunch of fix up stuff at all. You're looking for, you know, people that are in trouble, landlords that don't want to be landlords anymore. Um, people that, uh, tried to sell their house and couldn't sell it, maybe because the mar- there was a market shift. They owe more on the property than it's worth today. The exit of this, once you have it, is to lease option, because we're talking about 
sandwich lease options, lease options, you know, rent to own situations. This is what we're talking about. And, and these things in a market that we're approaching are going to be so essential to the growth and financial well-being of the people that can recognize it over the course of the next three to five years. We're going to find people and help people all around the country make turn themselves into real millionaires, multimillionaires. Because you know what? And that's another thing. Let's just let's forget about this whole millionaire thing for a second, okay? No, just just forget about a million dollars. And I'm going to tell you why. A million dollars is not what it used to be. A million dollars in the world that we live in today, you can still struggle financially. Absolutely. Very easily. So you have to put yourself in the mindset now of being a multimillionaire. Now, I'm going to put my age out there for a second. I'm, I'm going to be 50 this year. I can't believe it, but it's oh, true. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy. But I'm going to be 50 this year. And based on all retirement stats, by the time I retire, in order for me to retire with the equivalent in my, in my latter years and the equivalent in 25 years of a current $80,000 a year uh, take home, okay? An $80,000 a year take home. I have to have $5.6 million earning me 5% a year. And, and, and once I have that $5.6 million earning me 5%, you know, that 5%, that profit that I'm going to be taking out is going to be taxed at you know, based on the way the tax structure is today, anywhere between a 44 and 48 percent. And of course, if I'm a lot older, I'm not going to have the child tax credits and and all the things that younger people get tax advantages for. Right. I'm not. Right. But and I want you people to think about that out there. You know, people so think. Instead of yeah. Trying to gather a whole bunch of cash. Right. It lets it replace the income. Exactly. You and that's exactly what it ha has to be. Right. You know, you can you could pick up 5.6 million dollars worth of real estate earning you 5% interest, 6% interest, 10% interest a year without really putting up a ton of money and and we could show you how to do that. You know, these are things that we're doing all the time. You know, and if you if you go to our YouTube channel, you know, you're going to have and it's, you know, uh, uh, the Jason O. Miles Real Estate Network. You get real estate 360 uh, educational platform, uh, the real estate 360 um, uh, uh, podcast, which is what you're listening to now. Right. All we want to do is share these processes with you. But if you go to the website, if you go to the YouTube page or, or the Facebook page, you're going to be able to get a lot of data, a lot of information, learning a lot of different processes. Look at the, on YouTube, look at the process playlist, and there's videos there that walks you through all this stuff, right? And we want to make sure that you understand what you're doing when you're going out there to do these deals. Because, I'm sorry, go ahead, Steve. There's a few free things on, on there too, isn't there? You know, what they go and sign up. And yeah, there's a ton of stuff. There's, you know, there's free courses. All you got to do is just hit the link. In fact, I'll make sure in the description of this uh, particular podcast, whether you're listening to it uh, in your car or whether you're watching it, um, you know, at home or on whatever your device is, just in the description of this, go down there and there's a bunch of links in there. I'll make sure that there's going to be uh, links to the free courses uh, links to the YouTube channel, links to the Facebook page, and just start interacting with people there, you know, start asking questions, start sharing information, you know, it's fine, it's perfect. You know, we don't, we're not people that discriminate against anything, you know, we want people to be successful. We want to make sure that when you come there, if you don't, if you think that a process isn't correct, or you don't, you don't understand how it works, ask the question, you know, go ahead, you know, we've got, we had a lawyer reach out to us and say, hey, you know, you can't about one specific, this specific process, you know, you can't um, effectively transfer title if you don't have the ownership and da, da, da. And, and you know what, from a lawyer's perspective, uh, they feel as though they're right. 
But the reality of it is there are legal ways for you to do anything you want. Yes. It's, and and, and, and you, you outline those things in these things that they call contracts, right? <laughs> and, yes. and the rights that you're given inside those contracts will determine what you can and cannot do. So you can do anything if your contracts are written correctly. And that's, that's what it all boils down to. So when we're talking about these five steps, there's no one that can tell you you can't do it. I mean, we have been doing, when I met you, Steve, you know, not too long ago, just, you know, a while ago. A couple of decades. Yeah, a couple, a couple of decades Come ago. On. You know, real. you were doing, <laughs> a, at the time, uh, you were doing sandwich, uh, sandwich lease options all the time. I remember that, I remember a property that we bought from you that that you had tied up in an LO. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're like, yeah, which one was that? You know, but I don't know. Exactly. But uh yeah, I mean, this is a, and I got to ask you Steve, how, when you're doing your LOs, your lease options, you're on the, on the front end on the acquisition side, how much money are you personally putting out there typically? Well, it does depend. And and sometimes I do put some money out, but most of the time none. Mhm. Really? I mean, because I'm looking to do it and I structure it like I might be doing a wholesale property, if you, you know, as a, as an example. So I'm going to write a contract. I'm going to put zero down or $10 or a hundred bucks or something like that. Now, not always, because sometimes, you know, I'm dealing with people that, that want money up front. So if I can put down a thousand, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the, 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 you know, the particular contract, like I said, it's not another, you know, can of pinto beans. They're all different. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let me I'm ask you something. Do, let me ask. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to ask you something about that point, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. If you are, if you find a deal, there's a ton of equity in it, a ton of equity in it. Yes. And you're dealing with someone who is a little bit savvy, maybe not and, you know, super investor savvy, but a little savvy. They understand what's going on. And they say, hey, listen, I, I would do that. But for a deal like this, I have to have 10 grand. I got it. I'll do it. But I need 10 grand down. And there's 60,000 in real equity sitting right there right now today. But you don't have 10. You don't have 10 grand. What do you do? Well, there's a, there's a couple things to do. Uh, one, I would maybe contact a couple of my investor buddies. And say, listen, I'm going to give you one hell of a deal if you put up this 10 grand for me and I'll give you, I don't know, $12,000 in 60 days. You know, mm -hmm. if I get 10 grand for 60 days and pay them 2,000, guess what? They're looking at, holy moly, I can make 2,000 on my 10 in, in two months. You know, I'm looking at it, I'm stepping over there in their shoes. So that's two times six, that's $12,000 I make on 10. That's, that's better than a hundred percent return. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but I'm looking at it like I've got, I'm going to make 60 grand on this deal. I'll be more than happy to give up 2000 for sure to make this thing work. Now that's one idea. Now, another one is I might just reach out to some, some buyers, you know, and say, okay, you know, I put a little, a little time on my contract on my lease purchase contract say, okay, I'll give you the 10 grand, you know, give me a week to, to transfer some money, whatever, or 10 days. And then I'll go market it and go find somebody that wants to buy it. And then they'll give me 15,000 down and then I'll give him 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there's, and, and there's, there's, an, there's a third way as well. Let's say you wanted to hold on to this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, you could bring that same money partner in and create a process where you just go 50, 50 down the middle with them. And and you just exactly. and you just keep that going right there because if they're making money and they're happy, what are they going to do when it's time to you know to do another deal? Right. You know they're going to yeah. invest in you again. And and listen, you guys out there, I don't care how much money you have. You could be looking at a big pile of money on your desk, multi millions cash right now. You could be looking at that. You're eventually going to run out of money if you're just continuing to buy real estate because. This is all about the preservation of cash. Having cash is important. Being able to do deals is important. There are super, uber, uber wealthy people out there that are not using their cash to do deals. You know, they're borrowing it from business partners, from other lenders, and, 
you know, uh, fi other financial institutions like, you know, hedge funds and, and, and things like that. They're not putting up a ton of their own capital to make the money, to make the lion's share of the money. So you, know, you, you, you have to be there. I mean, jumping in. No, please do. Uh, on our mentor call this week, we were talking about that exact same thing because there's a few people that, you know, in the group that um, that think of just what it is that they have the ability to do. You know, I can, the, the, it starts out with, I can put down this amount of money. I can qualify for this amount of money in, in a, on a mortgage. You know, I have this income. I have this credit score. I have these things. Now, if you do that, and, uh, you know, we got a chance to talk about that um, for quite some time. Hey, they all, everybody realized that they're going to run out of assets and, and cash pretty quick. Correct. But if you step back and you look at the whole big picture, you start looking around at all of the real estate out there and all the assets, the cars and the 401ks and the people, other people with cash flow and money and businesses and so forth. All of a sudden you have the whole world in front of you and all your job is really is to just organize those assets to everybody's advantage. That's exactly correct. That's exactly right. So guys, look, I want to just take this moment to thank everyone for watching and listening and sharing and engaging. So I'm going to encourage you to continue to do that. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button you know, be on the team. And same thing if you're listening to this on your podcast, you know, subscribe to the channel, get the updates and the alerts on when our new stuff is coming out, comes out every week. And uh, again, share with us, you know, we really appreciate uh, your, the time that you take out of your day to listen to what we've created for you. Uh, and we're just, you know, we're thankful that you're doing it. So please continue to do it and share it with others if you find value in this. So for now, Remember these five steps, okay? Uh, it's the access to the, you know, or excuse me, the process that works in any market, uh, the least time, the least risk, you're providing a service, you're fixing problems, you're a problem solver, and it's the most profitable based on any strategy that you have, any strategy that you have, but recognizing the market is most important. So for now, guys, Steve and Miles are out. Thank you so very much, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Turn up.